welcome back. As per usual, we're going to start today with some songs. How are your dance moves coming along? Let's give Mayada a warm welcome. You can clap, drum roll, or use sparkle fingers. Where the spirit moves, there's freedom, freedom, freedom. And she helps us build community with freedom, with freedom. Cause we all have a responsibility to keep each other safe and to meet our needs. So let's work together with the spirit for freedom, for freedom. Let's work together with the spirit for freedom. Healing. yesterday we talked about a lot so it makes sense to have some questions remember the story we read called chocolate me can somebody help me remember what happened oh so what I heard was that a little boy was experiencing racism from three of his white neighbors we learned that one part of racism is when somebody treats somebody else badly because of the color of their skin and how they look. We also learned that white people don't experience racism because of white privilege. Privilege looks like getting special treatment just because you are white. Timmy, Johnny, and Mark's racist comments made the boy feel bad about himself. His mom reminded him why he was amazing and special. His mom was being like Jesus wants us to be. In the end, the boy shared cupcakes, but never apologized. Look at the new ending you created yesterday. What changed? What did you do differently? How did that make you feel? I just have one more question. Who does God love again? Everybody. There are a lot of ways you can show your love for somebody. Can you think of the ways that you show love? Yeah. One of the ways that God and Jesus show love is fighting for our liberation from oppression. Whoa, those are two big new words. Do you know what they mean? Liberation means freedom. Oppression 
is when someone with privilege uses their privilege to push other people down and hurt them. Racism is one of the ways that people are oppressed. Let's practice two motions to help us remember what liberation and oppression mean. Whenever you hear the word liberation, put your hands on your heart and open your arms to the sky. When I say oppression, tightly ball up your fists and press them into your forehead. Let's do that two more times. Liberation, oppression. Liberation, oppression. Let's end with liberation. Liberation. Today, we are going to read two stories where God surrounds two amazing people who are fighting for liberation. Our friend Heidi is going to tell us the first one. Everybody say, hello, Heidi. Hi, it's nice to see you again. Today, we are going to learn about a woman named Hagar. Our story today looks at an example from the Bible of what it looks like for God to liberate people who are oppressed. So a long time ago, there was a man named Abraham and a woman named Sarah who lived in the desert. They had a slave woman named Hagar. Hagar was oppressed because she had to do whatever Abraham and Sarah told her to do, which included some not very nice things. She probably would have chosen a different life, but sadly, Hagar had no choice but to stay with Abraham and Sarah. Often, people who are oppressed find that they have very few or no options to change their situations. And that's exactly how Hagar felt. Hagar had a son named Ishmael, but Sarah really wanted her own child. Finally, God answered Sarah's prayers and she had a baby boy named Isaac. The two boys, Ishmael and Isaac, grew up together. But Sarah thought Isaac was better and more special than Ishmael. So one day, the boys were playing together, and this made Sarah very angry. Remember, she had the power to do whatever she wanted to to Hagar. She usually was already mean to Hagar, but this time she decided to send Hagar and Ishmael far away. But remember where they lived? That's right, in the desert! It was so hot, and Hagar and Ishmael soon ran out of water. Have you ever been really, really thirsty after being outside on a hot summer day? Well, that's how Hagar and Ishmael felt. But they had nowhere to go, and no way to get water. Hagar started to cry, because she didn't know what to do. That's when God showed up. God told Hagar that God was watching out for Hagar and Ishmael. Then God sent an angel to Hagar, who showed her to a well so that they could drink water. Because of God's help, Hagar and Ishmael were able to survive even when in the desert, even when it seemed impossible. Thanks so much for reading with me. Here are some questions I'd like to explore with you and your family. Thinking about what you heard in the story, what do you think God is asking us to do? What would you have done if you were in the story? In your own words, can you tell me what liberation means? Good thinking! 
Let's make sure our bodies understand too. Where does your body want to move? Wiggle it around. Stand on your tiptoes. Sway your hips. I'm going to count out to 10. The closer I get to 10, the bigger I want your movements to get. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! Whoa, we are moving. Now I'm gonna count backwards to one, and the closer I get to one, the slower I want you to move. When I get to zero, we will freeze and oppose. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Very good moving, friends. Put one hand on your heart and the other hand on your belly. Let's breathe and tell our body thank you as we get ready for the next story. Guess what? God and Jesus did not stop fighting for the liberation of oppressed people ever. The Bible was written a long time ago. Our next story seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't really that long ago at all. This is about an incredible woman who fought against oppression for liberation for her entire life and how God stayed with her every step of the way. Are you ready to listen? Let's say hi to our new friend, Mahmoud. Hello, my name is Mahmoud and my pronouns are he, him, his. And a fun fact about me I like to drum really, really slow and really, 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 really fast. And today I'm going to be reading a story to you all about Harriet Tubman. Before she was Harriet. Written by Lisa Klein Ransom. Illustrated by James E. Ransom. Here she sits, an old woman, tired and worn, her legs stiff, her back achy. But before wrinkles formed and her eyes failed, before she reached her twilight years. She could walk for miles and see clearly under a sky lit only with stars. Before she was an old woman, she was a suffragist, a voice for women who had none. In marriages, in courts, in voting booths, before her voice became soft and raspy. It was loud and angry, rising above injustice. Before she was a suffragist, she was General Tubman, rising out of the fog, armed with courage, strong in the face of rebels and planters and overseers as they watched fields burn and bridges fall. 
and 700 slaves. Stop chopping and start running to a woman who ferried them to freedom on the Kambahi River turned River Jordan. Before she was General Tubman, she was a Union spy carrying secrets across battlefields to soldiers fighting in the Civil War for President Lincoln to end slavery. Before she was a Union spy, she was a nurse, caring for those hit with bullets and hatred and fear, tending to them with bandages and words in the bloodied dirt of Southern soil. Before she was a nurse, she was Aunt Harriet, daughter of Ben and Rit, who helped her parents flee their master and find their way through woods and streams to the safety of Canada and a new home in the North. Before she was Aunt Harriet, she was Moses, a conductor on an underground railroad with no trains and no tracks, just passengers traveling to freedom up north through swamps past slave catchers across rivers under the cover of night. Seeking the promised land for her people, led by dreams and God and faith, a wisp of a woman with the courage of a lion. Before she was Moses, she was Minty of Maryland, of one slave owner, and then others who worked her, punished her with lashes, broke her back, but not her spirit. Before she was Minty, she was Araminta, a young girl taught by her father to read the woods, the stars at night, readying for the day. She'd leave behind slavery, along with her name, and pick a new one, Harriet. and remember her days as a suffragist, as a general, as a spy, as a nurse, as Aunt Harriet, as Moses, as a conductor, as Minty, as Araminta, who dreamed of living long enough to one day be old, stiff, and achy, tired, and worn, and wrinkled, and free. Well, thank you for reading with me. That's a lot to think about, isn't there? Well, now would be a good time to find a, a friend, uh, a sibling, or a, a grown-up to talk with us. So, a couple of questions I have for you. Who was this story about? 
Can you think of a moment in the story where the main character was brave? What can we learn from Harriet Tubman and her lifelong fight for liberation? How did God help? How does God show up for us when we do hard things? How does God show up for us when we fight for liberation for everyone? One of the ways that we can stay brave and strong, like both Harriet and Hagar did, is to pray. Praying helps us show up and take action with compassion. We have been praying every day. Sometimes when I pray, I like to hold a very special object that reminds me of how loved I am. And every time I see it in my room, I'm reminded to say a prayer. For our art project today, you can use model magic or clay to make your very own special prayer helper. It can look like anything you want. And you can even pray while you make it. We can start now as we pray together. When the screen flashes red, say a prayer for your family. When you see orange, say a prayer for your friends. When you see yellow, say a prayer for your favorite animal. When you see green, say a prayer for the planet Earth. When you see blue, Say a prayer for your neighbors. When you see purple, say a prayer for yourself. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. Now, let's sing.